Hello, dear friends. Welcome to attend Jiangsu University Chinese Bridge Online Delegation Exchange Program. First of all, please allow me to make a brief introduction for myself. My name is Guan Yaji. I'm now working in School of Engineering uh, in Jiangsu University. Today, I will give you a course about telegraph machinery. If you guys have any questions after this class, you can send me an email. My email address has been shown on the first slide of this presentation. For the telegraph machinery, we will talk about uh, four sections. So the section one is the introduction. Section two is the moldboard plow. Section three is the harrow. And section four is the rotary machine. Cultivated land is one of the most basic and important work links in the field agricultural production. So what's the purpose of the cultivation? The purpose is to deep plow and plow the soil in the traditional agriculture cultivation system to turn the crop residues, diseases, and insect pests and the damaged topsoil layer deeply. After doing this, the low layer soil that has been restored for a long time will be turned back to the surface for the elimination, elimination of the weeds and pests. And these actions can improve the growth uh, environment of the crops. The farmland machinery currently in use is mainly divided into three categories due to the different working principles. The first one is the moldboard plow, the second one is the disc plow, and the uh, third one is the chisel plow. Now let's uh, watch a video about uh, the working condition of the moldboard plow. The moldboard plow has the longest application history, the most mature technology, and the widest range of the operations. The sepillate plow relies farming operations by cutting the surface of a plow body, uh, crushing soil, and turning over the soil. The other traditional uh, farming machine is disc plow. Disc plow is a farming machine with a spherical disc as a working part. It relies on its weight to force the soil into the soil, shown in this video. The soil penetration performance is worse than that of the split type plow. The soil uh, friction is small and the ability to cut the weeds is strong. It can be used for wasteland and heavy soil operations. But the disadvantage is that the ability to turn and cover is weak. Another disadvantage is that the price of this type of plow is higher. The third one is the cheese plow. The cheese plow also known as the deep loosened plow. The working part is a cheese tooth shaped dipping loosening shower, which is installed on the rear beam of the frame. The chisel shaped tools use the squeezing force to break the soil in the soil, and the dip loses the lower layer without turning over. Like shown in this picture, this picture showed cereals cheese plow produced by 
uh, American company named John Deere Company. John Deere Company is a famous company uh, for the agriculture uh, equipment. Uh, it is one of the largest agriculture equipment company around the world. The color of the agriculture equipment produced by John Deere is normally green, shown in this picture. This picture showed another serious cheese plow. It is produced by a France company named Kuhn. The right picture showed on this slide uh, is the cheese plow on the field work and after work. Okay. According to the different requirements of agricultural production, changes in natural conditions, power equipment, and other uh, conditions, the spillet plow has derived some new plows with the modern characteristics uh, in form, such as two-way plow, grid plow, uh, modulation plow, roller plow, high spillet plow, and so on. The disc plow and the cheese plow are widely in European countries, although they are used in China, but, the, but they are relatively very small. So this chapter, we focus on the uh, basic structure, working principle, and the design methods of the split plow. OK, now let's make a brief understanding about the moldboard plow. In this part, I will talk about the type of multiple plow, the structure of multiple plow, and the structure and the function of the main plow body. The first type of the multiple plow is the trailed one. In this transportation state, the weight of the machine is borne by the machine itself. And these two pictures show the trailed multiple plow uh, on work. Uh, we can see that the work wise of this type uh, is very large. The second type of the multiple plow is the suspended one. In this transportation state, the weight of the implement is borne by the tractor. The suspended plow is flexible and easy to operate, but the disadvantage of this type is the working wise is normally very small. The third type of the multiple plow is the semi-suspended. In this transportation state, the front part of the weight of the implement is borne by the tractor, but the second half is borne by the implement itself. This picture showed a semi-suspended plow in a transported state. OK, let's learn the structural diagram of the semi-suspended plow. This slide shows the structural diagram of the semi-suspended plow. So we can see number one is the tubing, and the number two is the adjusting screw. Number three is the curved plate. Number four is the longitudinal beam. Number five is the inclined beam. Number six is the safety device. Number seven is the depth limit limiting wheel. Number eight is the tail wheel sterling road. Number nine is the road transportation sign. Number 10 is the tail wheel. Number 11 is the plow body. And the plow body is the most important part of this uh, plow. Number 12 is the counter. Number 13 is the vertical sterling shaft. And the last one, number 14, is the suspension headstock. Now I will provide uh, you guys a video about the multiple plow in working conditions. When the uh, plow is working, it mainly relies on the plow body curved surface composed of the plow shell and the plow wall to enter the soil, cut, break, and turn the soil so that the surface soil layer and the bottom soil can be exchanged, creating conditions for crop growth.
Okay. The structure of a multiple plow contains plow frame, main body, supporting working device, tillage depth adjustment device, and traction suspension device. The main plow body is the co-working part of the multiple plow. Now uh, let's uh, talk about the structure and the function of the main plow body. The main plow body includes plow post, plow keel, plow wall, plow shell, plow sideboard, plow heel, and the plow surface. And this, uh, I will provide another video here. It, it will help you to understand the main plow body. What's the function of each part of the main body? The first plow shell is to cut the soil and get the soil to rise to the plow wall. And the plow wall is to break and turn over the soil. Plow sideboard is to balance lateral force. Plow post is to connect plow frame and plow body surface. Plow care is connect the plow and the plow surface and the plow post. Plow hair is to well resistance pass to prevent the tear of the glow the plow side plate from wearing. Okay, uh, after starting the multiple plow, we will turn to Hero. But before this, I will provide a uh, video for to summarize the multiple plow. Okay, uh, for the hero, uh, hero part, we will talk about three parts. The first part is the background. The uh, part three is the types of the disk plow, and the part three is the structure of disk hero. There is a lot of space between the Arab land. The soil block is large, and the ground surface is uneven. So in this situation, sewing operations cannot be carried out yet. So it is necessary to carry out loosening and leveling operations to meet the requirements for the cultivation of the crops that are flat on the ground and on the bottom. This work is generally done by Harrow. There are many types of Harrow. According to the needs of the different operations, there are following types, such as the nail tooth harrow, disc harrow, suspended tiller, rolling harrow, ballasted, and so on. Among them, nail tooth harrows are currently mostly used uh, for power storage operations. The disc harrow and suspended tillers are more mechanized. 
Now uh, I will show a lot of pictures about different uh, harrows. This picture showed a tilled soil loosening combined nail tooth harrow. And this picture showed a combined spring tooth harrow. These two pictures, uh, the top showed a spiral rolling harrow and a disc harrow combination. The bottom showed a spiral rolling harrow and a nail tooth harrow combination. And this picture showed a multifunctional combined operation unit. So this part can uh, use for a lot of functions. It contains the spring tooth harrow, disc harrow, nail harrow, and a suppressor. The last picture showed the V-type suppressor. Okay, after taking a look on so many pictures, we will talk about the different types of disc harrow. According to the connection or with the power, the disc harrow could be classified into tailed, suspended, and semi-suspended, which is the same with the multiple plow. This slide showed a tailed notch uh, disc harrow. And this picture showed uh, a tailed disc harrow in operation. This picture showed the suspended disc harrow. So we can see that the harrow uh, was burned by the tractor. This picture showed a semi-suspended disc harrow. We also have another rules to classify the harrows. For example, if we, according to the diameter of the blade, uh, the harrow could be classified into heavy harrow, medium harrow, and a line harrow. Diameter of the heavy harrow is near 660 millimeter. Diameter of the medium harrow is about 560 millimeter. Diameter of the line harrow is about 460 millimeter. We also could classify the harrows according to the shape of the outer edge of the blade. So it can be uh, classified into four edge harrow and a gap harrow. The four edge blade is uh, easy to process and manufacture. And the notch blade has a strong soil penetration ability, and it is easy to cut off the weeds and the crop the residues. But the disadvantage of the gap harrow uh, is that the cost is normally very high. Normally, these two types of harrows is combined in a uh, tillage machinery. For example, the front uh, uh, the front row harrow is a gap blade. The rear row harrow is a four edge blade, shown in this picture. According to the configuration of the rig group, the harrow could also be classified into the single row rig, double row rig, combination rig, and offset rig. Offset rig. So this picture showed four different configurations of the rig group. The figure A showed a single row symmetry. The figure B showed double row symmetry. And the figure C showed double row offset. The last figure showed the staggered one. OK, we, uh, in this part, we will learn the structure of disk harrow. The structure of disk harrow includes rig group rig frame, traction frame, deflection, and adjustment device. The specific, the specific structure of harrow is summarized in this slide. So the number one is the suspension frame. Number two is the cross beam. Number three is the mud scraper. Number four is the disc harrow group. Number five is the rig frame. Number six is the notched harrow group. 
Okay, after learning uh, the multiple plot and the hero, we will turn to the last Telegram machine, uh, rotary machine. In this part, the basic composition, working principle, operation characteristics, and the main type of the rotary machine will be studied. Rotary tillers have a short history of application and have different uses. For example, some countries and regions are used as the farmland machinery. Some are used as the soil uh, preparation machinery. And most of them in China and the surrounding areas, areas are used to loosening soil and leveling ground after farming. The amount of application in China is increasing year by year, especially in arid areas of the north. Now let's uh, watch a video about the rotary cultivator. Rotary cultivator is a cultivation machine that uh, actively rotates walking paths and uh, processes the soil with the principle of milling. In this picture, we can see uh, the result of the the result of the rotary tiller. The basic composition of the rotary tiller contains frame, transmission device, knife roller and earth retaining cover, levering car carriage, and so on. The detailed structure of rotary tiller is shown in this slide. The number one is the main beam. Number two is the suspension frame. Number three is the gel box. Number four is the side transmission box. Number five is the flat soil carriage. Number six is the earth retaining cover. Number seven is the support load. Number eight is the knife shaft. And number nine is the rotary tiller. Rotary tiller blades are driven by the power of a tractor while rotating in a random group, while removing forward in a straight line, cutting into the soil during the rotation and throwing the cut pieces of the soil backwards. After cleaning with the retaining plate, they are further broken and fall to the surface. Drag, uh, drag the carriage flat. Rotary tillers are characterized, are characterized by strong soil crushing ability, high flatness, good soil adaptability, short longitude side, small tillage depth, high power consumption, and small wise, and low efficiency. According to the connection of the power, the rotary tillers could be classified as the trailed and the suspended and the direct connection, which has a little different with the uh, multiple plow and harrow. And according to the According to the different tool ANSYS placement, the rotary, the rotary tillers uh, could be classified as the horizontal ANSYS, vertical ANSYS, and the inclined ANSYS. This picture showed a vertical ANSYS tiller. And if we classify the rotary uh, tiller according to the power transmission road, the rotary tillers could be classified as the side transmission, middle transmission, transmission. This slide shows the side transmission motor. The transmission shaft was on the one side of the machine. And this slide showed another type, the middle transmission motor. We can see that the gel box was set on the middle of the machine. Okay. That's all the content of this lesson.
Now let me make a brief summary. Cultivation is a precondition for the whole agriculture work. Nowadays, these work are completely done by tillager machine. In this class, we studied three important tillager machinery, namely moldboard plow, harrow, and rotary tiller. The first one is the moldboard plow. Multiple plow has the longest application history. We learned the different type and structure of a multiple plow. As the most important part of multiple plow, the main plow body should be carefully designed to meet the different requirements for different soil conditions. After plowing, the soil block is still large and the ground surface is uneven after plowing. So the harrow and the rotary tiller will be used to carry out loosening and leveling operations to meet the requirements for the cultivation of crops that are flat on the ground and on the bottom. And in this class, we learned the structure and the working conditions of different harrow and rotary tillers. The picture and the videos in this presentation will help you guys to understand the tillage machinery in actual agriculture production. Okay, thank you very much for your listening.